Hey guys, this is Jasmine here with Black Flower Co. Pro today. And I want to show you something very special that I'm going to be making. Um, it's going to be my whipped soap, okay? I'm going to be using um, a melt and pour base and cast out soap. Uh, to make the general base of it, I'm going to show you the ingredients as I go. If you would like to purchase this recipe, um, let me know personally. It's not up on the website, blackflowerco.com, just yet, but it will be. But if you'd like to pre-order it, um, I'd be happy to take those. Just send me a message, send me a link, whether you're on Facebook or um, uh, just on my uh, in, in the YouTube comments, let me know and I'll be happy to give that to you. But we're going to be making a whip soap. I'm going to show you how to make the base of it. And then at the very end, I have a special surprise. I'm going to be adding my own little twist to it. Okay. So stay tuned. This is going to be really cool. I promise. We're going to go ahead and cut straight to the chase and get to crafting. This is going to require a double boiler. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you put water inside of a pan, get it ready, um, put it on the stove on high heat, and you let the water basically start boiling. And I'll show you how I put this in there when I'm done. But since we're using melt and pour and we're going to be basically emulsifying a few ingredients, you're going to go ahead and start getting that pan ready for the double boil, okay? While we are preparing our ingredients that are going to melt first. So first and foremost, our cast aisle soap base. I like to use cast soap. You can use oatmeal, goat's milk, whatever you prefer. Um, in this in this recipe that you're going to be making, um, and so we're going to use a melt and pour base. It, it gets pretty firm, pretty quick and easily. So I like to use that. We're going to be measuring units. Always do it in ounces to make sure that your measurements are accurate. So if you want to duplicate. Um, this recipe, you can make it to whatever size you need to. So this is an ounce scale that I'm going to be using to measure the ingredients that are going to be in larger ounces. And then I also have a jewelry scale that I use to measure like things that are grams and like in much smaller, um, in much, much smaller quantities. Okay. So what I like to do is for, you could, it's going to take a really long time if you try to do your cut, your, um, your melt and pour and just put it in there like that. You want to cut it down. If you can shred it, if you had to have a grater, I advise like grating it down as fine as you can because it takes a lot of heat to melt these and it's just very time consuming. So I'm going to cut this down into small little squares. I won't spend too much time cutting here. So Okay, so now we have that. We're gonna go ahead and do our, we're gonna measure it. And like I said, if you want exact measurements, this recipe will be available for purchase um, on blackflowerco.com. We're gonna also add in some of our castile soap. You can use any kind. You can use, this is Sprouts brand, store brand. You can use Dr. Bronner's. It already has a scent in it, or you can scent it on your own. Whatever it is that you wanna use, use. And it'll be glorious. Next, I'm going to be adding in vegetable glycerin. This is the kind that I use. I always like to use a humectant. Vegetable glycerin is great, is because it's great because it helps for the skin to um, absorb water and retain it really well. I'm going to go ahead and use coconut oil. Sorry if I'm not holding all of these the same direction, guys. I kind of don't remember. But I'm going to use coconut oil. This one is refined, so it doesn't have a coconut smell. If you would like for it to have a coconut smell, just use refined. But coconut is a great cleansing oil. Um, so it's light on the skin and it will give your, it usually gives soaps like some more bubbling factors. This is our emulsifier that's going to really help to hold it together. Okay. So almost, almost forgot that, but I did not. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. And now that we have put in all of our meltable ingredients that we may be melting together, I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick stir and we're going to put it in our double boiler. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this into our double boiler. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so you put it right in the middle and then we're just gonna let it do its thing and melt. Okay, so we're about almost all the way melted here. Well, actually, oops, sorry, steam, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> we're all the way melted here. So we're gonna quickly take this out and get ready to start whipping. Okay, so quickly get ready the bowl, have my whippers, my mixer ready, and I'm going to add this in and we're going to immediately get to whipping and working. So now that we have a nice fluffy whip, I'm going to go ahead and add in the bonus. 
Now, right here is where you can stop if you're gonna make a base or you can add in whatever additives you wanna add in. The bonus for this particular one that I'm gonna show you guys today is I'm gonna make this into a watermelon fluffy scrub. Yes. So this is gonna be awesome. I'm so excited to do this, guys. Um, in order to make it watermelon, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a little bit of colorant, I'm gonna add in some jojoba beads, and I'm gonna add in a little bit of fragrance and essential oils to give it that watermelon pop. Before adding in my preservative, I always like to make sure it's cool to the touch. So what I'll do is I'll get like a little sample piece here, big enough. I test it. Okay, definitely cool to the touch. And if you look at that texture, guys, I don't know if you saw that, but this is wow. Okay, that's a beautiful whip. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my measured Optifin for this amount. Optifin is a gentle preservative, in case you missed it in my other videos. Okay, so here we're going to be doing a quick lather test. You just take a little bit to the side. I'm going to get my hands just a little bit wet, okay? And then, so I have that much. This is really soft on the skin. It does a slight bleed of color. However, because of the soap it has in it, it generally does not tend to stain. As you can see, it's going down the drain pretty easily now. And my hands feel lovely. And that concludes our little whipped soap surprise. So this is the end result. I did try to pipe it a little bit, but eh, it's okay. I garnished the top with a little bit of the, uh, not the seeds, the um, jojoba beads. And so that nice, thick, creamy texture, I'll show you guys what's in the rest of the bowl. My kids love this soap, so they're gonna be super duper excited about using it. So it's really cool how it came out like that. It's almost like a butter, but it's all soap and it's all for your body and hands. Um, it's very, very gentle and doesn't feel harsh on the skin at all, and basically can just be used like as a butter. So. That basically concludes our whip soap, how you make it using um, BTMS 50 and liquid and um, melt and pour cast out soaps. Uh, it's pretty easy to make. Um, and I have the exact ratios ready, you know, for those of you that wanna buy it, but this is kind of like what you would be looking at, what the basic process is gonna be and what you would do once you do have whatever materials you wanna make, or if you just wanna make a base and then customize it however you want. Today I chose watermelon, but you can do cotton candy, you can do um, chocolate, vanilla cake, you can do confetti with um, sprinkles, soap sprinkles. I'm also gonna be doing a tutorial on that soon. Um, and you can basically customize it however you wanna do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. I'm more than happy to answer. And you guys have a lovely day. Bye.